In this video, we're going to have a look at how to differentiate inverse trig and inverse hyperbolic functions. So starting with the inverse trig function, let's say if y equals arc sine x, find dy by dx. So what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to rearrange this equation to make it say x equals, and that'll make it a little bit easier. So if we sign both sides, we get that sine y equals x. So now we can actually find dx by dy. So dx by dy, and we know the differential of sine y is cos y, which means that dy by dx equals 1 over cos y, the reciprocal of that. So now what we're going to do, we're just going to take a standard trig identity. So I'm going to do a little bit of work at the side here. So we've got sine squared y plus cos squared y is identical to 1. And that means that cos squared y is identical to 1 minus sine squared y. And unsquaring both sides, that means we get cos y is identical to plus or minus 1 minus sine squared y. So now, that means that dy by dx is equal to 1 over plus or minus square root of 1 minus sine squared y which is equal to, and at the start we defined x to be sine y. Take the plus or minus to the top, 1 over the square root, and sine y is x, so that becomes 1 minus x squared. And there we have it, dy by dx is plus or minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. But something's not quite right, because something can't have two gradients at the same time, we can't say it's plus 1 over that and minus 1 over that. So let's have a look now at the graph of the arc sine function to see whether it's the positive or the negative that we need to accept as being the differential. So first thing I'm going to do to remind myself of the shape of the arc sine graph is to draw the sine graph. So now drawing the sine graph in the domain where it's 1 to 1, i.e. from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, sine graph shape like that. So this point here is pi over 2, 1. Then the origin's on there. Then here we've got minus pi over 2, minus 1. So we're going to use that now to draw the graph of arc sine. And because we're reflecting through the line y equals x, the coordinates of these points, of these key points that I've labelled here, just swap. So instead of pi over 2, 1, the graph is now 1, pi over 2. Instead of 0, 0, well, the points swap. It still stays 0, 0. And here, instead of minus pi over 2, minus 1, I get minus 1, minus pi over 2. So there's two possible shapes this could take. It could either be this shape here, or it could be this shape here. Now to check, basically I've reflected through the line y equals x, so it won't be the same curve as this here. So look at these two curves here, which one basically isn't the same shape as the original. Um, well, I can see the green one is the shape, same shape as the original, so that's not the one I want. That, there's the graph now of y equals arc sine x. And notice, no matter where we draw a tangent on this, anywhere at all, it's always going to give 
a positive gradient. Therefore, dy by dx is equal to 1, the positive, over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And we can do a similar proof for trying to find the differential of arc cos of x. Now, you're actually given these differentials in your formula book. So unless the question asks you to prove that the differential of arc sine or arc cos of x is that, then we can just take for granted that it's in the formula book here. So there's our differential of arc sine of x. We can see the differential of arc cos of x is minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. That's because the arc cos graph is always negative in gradient. So we discard the positive, discard the positive in this case. And again, differential of arc tan is that. So let's just do a quick example of how to use these formula sheets efficiently. So say the question was um, y equals arc tan of 6x squared plus e to the x. Well, we can use the chain rule and these formula sheets to quickly differentiate arc tan. So dy by dx. So what I like to do when I'm differentiating using the chain rule, I like to actually pretend that I can't see in the bracket. So I'm not bothered at all what's in that bracket. So I'm going to hide it for now. So we'll just find the differential of arc tan of something. So dy by dx, arc tan of something is 1 over 1 plus whatever that thing is squared. times the differential of the bracket. So times whatever the differential of what I've just covered up is. So now let's have a look at what I just covered up. It was 6x squared plus e to the x. So that's what goes in the blue box. 6x squared plus e to the x. So writing that down. 6x squared plus e to the x squared times the differential of what's in the bracket. So times 12x plus e to the x which is equal to 12x plus e to the x over 1 plus 6x squared plus e to the x, all squared. So we can just use the formula booklet and the chain rule. We don't actually need to prove it each time. So let's move on now to di uh, differentiating, say, our shine of x, so hyperbolic trig functions. So let's say we've got... Um, y equals r cosh of x and we want to find dy by dx well do as we did before let's cosh both sides so we get cosh y equals simply x if we cosh both sides we get cosh y equals x find dx by dy which means that dx by dy. Okay, so using Desmos, I can see that that's the graph of y equals inverse cosh of x, and I can see the gradient of that, no matter where I draw a tangent, is always going to be positive. Therefore, I can discard the positive, uh, I can discard the negative, I know the gradient's always positive. So dy by dx equals 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1. because the gradient of y equals our cosh of x is always greater than zero. It's always positive. Now you are given some of these in your formula booklet. So just, I've taken this from the OCR formula booklet, but the NXL one's pretty similar. But we're not giving it in the differentiation section, we're giving it the integration section. So here we can see that this one is the the differential of arc shine of x over a is that there the differential of our cosh of x over a is that one there so we're given it in a slightly obscure form but we are given it in the formula book
So now let's have a look at an exam question all to do with this. Let's put it into a bit of context. So I've taken this from an OCR paper, but it equally applies to Edexcel, AQA and MEI. So it says given that y equals x, 1 minus root of 1 minus x squared minus r cos of x, find dy by dx in a simplified form. Well, I'm going to split this into two sections. I'm first of all going to use the product rule on part A there. So part 1. Differentiate A first, then B. So the product rule on part A, so U equals X, which means that DU by DX equals 1. I've got V equals 1 minus X squared to the power of a half, which means that DV by DX equals half using the chain rule half 1 minus x squared to the power of minus a half times the differential of what's in the bracket times minus 2x really important remember that minus sign okay so the 2 uh, and the half times by each other to make 1 so then the differential part a is using the product rule v u dash so convert them back to ordinary root form so the square root of 1 minus x squared times 1, so that's v du by dx, plus u dv by dx, so x times 1 half of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, times minus 2x, and I can see here that the 2 and the half multiply together to make 1, so I can cross those out, which is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared plus 2x's times together to make x squared, so minus x squared on the top over square root of 1 minus x squared. So that's part A done, or what we define to be our part A. Then we're going to take away the differential of the r cos of x. So first of all, let's find what the differential of r cos of x is. So we were given it in our formula sheet. We can prove it, but there's no need because we are given it here. So the differential of r cos of x, we can see here, is minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So let's go back down here. So minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Putting that together now, we've got the differential of that. Take the differential of that. So, therefore, dy by dx equals our first differential, 1 minus x squared rooted plus minus x squared over the square root of 1 minus x squared of 2 root of 1 minus x squared between 1 and 0 dx and notice we've just differentiated something to get that expression there so the integral of it well must actually be given in the question we've, dis we've just differentiated this expression here to get that so if we integrate this we must get that so x root of 1 minus x squared the arc cos of x so now let's sub the limits in so that's between 1 and 0 equals, so let's sub 1 in, 1 lot of root of 1 minus 1 squared, take arc cos of 1, minus 0, square root of 1 minus 0 squared, take arc cos of 0. So simplifying this, they're both 0, and let's leave nothing to chance, just to be 100% sure, let's do the arc cos of 1 on our calculator, we'll get 0, now we should know that, however the pressure in exam, you should always use your calculator when it's available, and then the arc cos of 0, which is half pi, so minus minus half pi, equals one half pi 
And let's just double check on our calculator that we've got the right answer. So the integral of 2 square root of 1 minus x squared between 0 and 1. 0 the lower limit, 1 the upper limit. That'll take a while to work this out. We get that. Now, the way to check whether it matches the answer we've just got, half pi, if we take away our answer, take away pi over 2, we should get number... We should get 0, or a number very close to 0. Yes, it's very, very close to 0. So that's a rounding error in the calculator. 2.16 times 10 to the negative 12. That's so small, it essentially is 0. So that gives us comfort that we've got the right answer. So there it is. How to differentiate inverse trig and inverse hyperbolic functions.